Bill Hinshaw, CEO of Accela Therapeutics, is with us today at our flagship studio. Accela is pioneering a new approach to treat complex diseases, include, including something that is top of mind for many of us, long COVID. Bill, thank you for joining us. It's a great pleasure to be here, Wendy. Can you tell us a little bit about Excella's decision to focus on long COVID? Yes, we went to focus on long COVID fatigue specifically mm. because it is a transformational near-term commercial opportunity that has the best opportunity to realize value. And that's for a few reasons. First is the very large unmet medical need. The next is that, frankly, Excel is far and away in the lead in this field. There are no other therapies in development that have generated controlled data. So we are the leader in this area. The next opportunity is it's a rapid time to market. Mm -hmm. There's a chance to recognize and realize value quickly, and the size of that opportunity is very large. Now, we're, of course, a flagship pioneering founded company, and so we have a platform. And in fact, our platform, our big what if question is what if we could indeed address the needs of complex diseases through putting together compositions of endogenous metabolic modulators, amino acids in our case. And we've demonstrated that our platform can rapidly produce multiple programs. In fact, three programs have reached phase two level of development, including important data from NASH recently, mm -hmm. market leading levels of liver stiffness uh, measurement as it's called, along with a great profile because all of our programs are designed to be multi-targeted, safe and well tolerated, oral, and work with the body system. So we're incredibly compelled by the platform, and right now our focus is realizing the value and need of long COVID fatigue. How does that, the platform and the data that you described from the phase two programs give you the confidence that you need to go forward with the long COVID program? So our data is based on a combination of our proprietary tools and information that we do, world literature, and in fact, for long COVID, what we saw was the preclinical and clinical data that we had generated in NASH. Mm -hmm. We then went to the world experts in fatigue and long COVID and understood that those pathways that we were affecting should have a powerful effect in what's called post-acute infections. Okay, so we're seeing it in the pandemic of long COVID fatigue, mm -hmm. but it is in other post-acute infections as well, we believe. And so we then went and tested that in a phase 2A study with the University of Oxford and generated very profound results mm -hmm. that give us a lot of confidence combined with the fact that we already have safety data uh, on more than 200 yeah. subjects in the NASH program in dosing this program. So we're very well poised and confident to move forward in this important disease. That's great. You talked a little bit about the patient need that mm -hmm. you're seeing. Can you tell expand on that a little bit for us? Yeah, Wendy, this is actually quite unsettling for everybody when they understand the impact that we're talking about both individually and societally. Mm -hmm. Let me start with the individual. So these patients are experiencing a profound level of fatigue where they are unable to function in a normal way. We're talking about college athletes who are yeah. being dropped off at their front door. We're talking about physicians that are unable to continue their practice. We're talking about parents who don't even feel capable of caring right. for their children adequately. So on an individual level, this is devastating. On a societal level, Time Magazine labeled this as potentially the greatest mass disabling event in human history. Wow. Okay, and that is because we're already seeing more than four million Americans out of work, according to Brookings, more than one million Americans disabled, according to the GAO. Mm -hmm. So this is a societal impact combined with a personal impact yeah. that is not going away. And right. that's something that many people were hopeful for, but being endemic doesn't mean good. It means it's here to stay. Yeah. And so from that standpoint, we are again poised to be the leading program to help yeah. address this major public health crisis. Yeah, that is a profound impact and, and obligation. Absolutely. Um, to help. So. In that vein, Excella stands out in the industry for its focus on developing a therapeutic for long COVID. Mm -hmm. Why do you think there hasn't been much of a focus in this area prior? I think there are a couple of fundamental reasons for this. The first is a positive, which is they were, of course, the life sciences industry was really oriented on the acute mm -hmm. and vaccination mm -hmm. needs. And what we have achieved as an industry, including, of course, being led by Moderna, is remarkable. Right. We've been able to turn this pandemic into something where we've dramatically reduced some of the risk. 
at the same time, when you look then at these patients who are still suffering, yeah. and, and I just want to stress that point, these are the same patients who are infected originally and they're continuing to suffer for a long period of time. In fact, the patients in our trial, more than 512 days, oh. right, they don't have an opportunity. Why not? So outside of the focus and energy that went into the acute setting is the fact that this is a new disease. Mm -hmm. So there's uncertainty. And our larger life sciences colleagues, and I used to be there, uh, that's not their bread and butter. All right, that's where innovation, that's where biotech, that's where boldness comes in. And so it's a new disease, the regulatory path, the understanding of the disease has been part of what they've been trying to understand. Is it going to be sustained? And we know it is at this point in time. Mm -hmm. The second major reason within that is it targeting. They're looking for a single molecular target, which is the traditional path of how you develop drugs in the current environment. And that's not what long COVID or long COVID fatigue is. Mm -hmm. It's a complex syndrome. In our case, what we believe happens is that the virus invades the cell. It hijacks the machinery in order to make more virus. When that happens, some of us recover. Others, however, end up in an inflammatory state their endothelial function is dysregulated. So the environment of the cells is really challenged. So they're in a survival mode. Now they can't receive energy well. Mm -hmm. So our multi-targeted approach of addressing the inflammation, addressing the endothelial function allows the cells now to be driven by the bioenergetic process. And that's why we believe 1125 can have a profound and differentiated effect here. Great. Talk to us a little bit about the clinical trial results so far um, and why you're excited and encouraged by what you're seeing. So it's not only us that are excited and encouraged, it's the medical community, it's the patient right. community. They are incredibly excited about this, both because they don't have other options and because of what I described, our multi-targeted approach, safe and well tolerated, and the results. So let's talk about that. So we conducted a phase 2A study with the University of Oxford, world leaders in COVID, long COVID, and mitochondrial function, which is a core part of our mechanism. And the results of that study were quite profound. So we were looking to understand mechanistic impact, biomarker impact, as well as clinical measures to help inform our next stage of development. And frankly, the results astounded us and exceeded our expectations. So at a high level, what we saw is highly statistically significant impact on total physical and mental fatigue. Mm -hmm. We saw importantly, a clinically relevant change in the level of fatigue in more than 70% of the patients. And that's just in one month of dosing. Mm. And again, I'll go back to something I said before. These patients had been in this fatigue, severely fatigue state for more than 500 days. Yeah. So when we shared this data with the world experts, their remarks were, this does not happen naturally. This is really profound. And because we saw it in both physical and mental, they were incredibly encouraged. Now this highly relevant clinical data was supported by biomarker data in impact on PCR tau, which is a measure of mitochondrial re uh, recovery. It was supported by trends in lactate, a measure of muscle health, as well as other key biomarkers. And 1125 continued to show a safe and well tolerated profile. Great. So the physicians are looking at patients who are in a profoundly dysregulated state they can't recover, and now they have this wonderful opportunity to give a product like ours, and that's why themselves and we are so excited. Wonderful. Yeah. So with those data in hand, mm -hmm. the next step is to talk to regulators, mm -hmm. both here in the U.S. and abroad. Can you tell us a little bit about how those conversations are going? Yeah, we're very encouraged, and this quarter will be an important quarter for Excella and for long COVID fatigue patients. We have been interacting with the MHRA, which is the UK regulatory body where we conducted the trial, and we are having very positive and productive discussions there. We're in continuing to uh, interact with the FDA in a parallel process because our goal is to have a potential registration trial that could be of global nature, and we anticipate that feedback and being able to move forward in the next next quarter. This is really important, again, because this is a new disease and many stakeholders understand the seriousness, mm -hmm. understand the impact, and that we are in a leading position and are looking for clarity about our next steps. And that's what we look forward to progress. Great. Um, thinking of next steps, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit of uh, future view in terms of the biggest leaps forward that you see for Excella in the next three to five years. 
No, I think it, we're very excited and compelled by the platform that we've generated. We have this potential to go directly into a registration trial for a major public health crisis. And we see that as a catalytic and transformational event to go mm -hmm. back then to what our platform can deliver. Wendy, we've delivered eight straight consecutive studies demonstrating impact on the biologies we targeted. That's science, that's not an accident. And so we have the opportunity to continue to evolve our liver programs with 1125 and NASH, as well as 1665 and overt hepatic encephalopathy. And we have other programs lined up. So we're right. poised yeah. to really focus on something that is transformational near-term need, and we're ready to then build from there and excited for the future, because we believe we're catalyzing and frankly pioneering a major area in science. Fantastic. So some near-term opportunities with a very important, profound public health need, um, as well as long-term opportunities to follow. We'll be looking forward to that for years to come. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Wendy.